okay so i'm going to start with a very very basic uh basic project and i'll just show you how will you go and create it but before that i don't know if you guys are already aware but before you start any java project you need to install three four main important components one is okay. you, need to, you need to install jdk right so and maybe i'll cover that part also how how and where from where you yeah. Okay, so let me go here. So these are the area from where you actually download the JDK. So this is from where you will download. Right now, uh, I'm on JDK 8. Current version, I think, is towards JDK 13 or JDK 12, 13. But you don't have to download that, you know, JDK 13, JDK 12. It doesn't harm you in any, any way. But uh, minimum what is required is JDK 8. So I'm using JDK 8 right now. Okay, now next is... Next is once you install JDK, then you need to install Eclipse. So Eclipse also, you the same way you have to Google, you have to go to the Eclipse site, downloads, and you download the latest version. Okay, so from here you can download 64 bit, 32 bit based on what, what is your system uh, requirement. You will download that specific Eclipse version. So once you have these uh, JDK and Eclipse, so before you have to download JDK, you have to install JDK, and then you have to uh, download Eclipse, and then you have to install it. First, JDK, then Eclipse, and then you have to download the Maven, right? So Maven is also something which is very, very important without which we cannot proceed. So Maven is also you have to download, you have to go to download and you have to, uh, you know, download these files. So perhaps a zip file. So don't go towards source, always download binaries, right? So you might get this kind of options many in that many places whenever you go and download. So whenever there's an open source project, they give you an option to download source or binary. Binary is the compiled version of it. Source is just open source. So you don't, because you are supposed to be using it not, and not modifying it. So you are always supposed to be downloading the binary files. Okay, so once you download binary file, it will be installed. It will, it will not be installed. So this may one is not a something which you can install. This is something once you download it, then you need to configure it. So that configuration part, uh, maybe I will not be able to explain today. I'll send a link uh, on how to do it because I have, a, I have a Mac system and Mac is different than Windows in terms of Maven configuration, right? So M2 home, M Maven home, all these JDK home, all these values has to be configured. I think I have a post as well on it uh, in my website, Automation for Identity. If you couldn't find it there, maybe then I will uh, send some instructions over on, on the WhatsApp group, which we have, okay? So these three things is what we need, right? Once you have all these configurations with you, then you have to go and click on file. You have to open the Eclipse first of all. Once you open Eclipse, you need to go to file and you will go and create a new project from here. So you go here in the other section, you click on Maven, select Maven project, next. Then you have to select this skip archetype selections. So you never do this when you're going to go and create a new project. At least in the beginning, you never use it. You always use it. You will know when to use it. But since you are not aware what it is, always mark it as create a simple project and skip archetype selection. And the default location will be this. So in this case, it will be the workspace which you have, which you have created for your Eclipse. Then I go on next here. I have to give some group ID and artifact ID. So you have to give something like com.visionit or by the way, you can give any name. It's not mandatory to give that specific format, but it's, it's a common practice to give some, some good names here, some, something which represents your organization or your project. So let's say I'm working for a vision IT. So I'll write com.visionit and then here I'll write my something like my, your project name basically. So I'll say my first project name or something my first project and that's it you can leave it or everything other options as it is and you can click on finish as soon as you do that you will see a project being created here which is my first project the sign for this that this is a maven project is you will see a m symbol at the top this m symbol at the folder above represents that this is a maven project and then you should also see these kind of folder structure so source main java source main resource source test java source test resources right you should see it otherwise it will not be uh, properly proper maven project because in any maven project you you should see these options because it that's what it creates by default now 
say if you are doing it for the first time then it will not come immediately it will take some time so there will be some downloads happening you will see sir, i have question sir yeah hello yes yes tell me yes. Uh, actually i have uh, created a clone your repository yes so that's fine yeah. right so you have yes yes can you can you come again you are saying uh, you have cloned it right ट inside source test this is a folder so if it is here it must be it must come in your clone as well i don't know why it's not coming there are multiple reasons for it perhaps you have not cloned it right or secondly you are not in a right branch right so if you are not in the right branch check in which branch you are in and based on that you can judge whether you have it there or not if you uh, if you clone it and you the cloned clone branch which you have there is master this will be there okay because if it has files all right so okay. just try it on which branch you are okay anyway i have i have actually sent an email uh, sorry not email the a post in the whatsapp group that is, uh, don't use this repository any anymore try to create your own repository somewhere else or just won't don't want to do, go to that complexity uh, just call, you know uh, create your own own project with your own names and all and just start working on your project and uh, you use this project only to for the reference purposes previously i asked you guys to create branches and just upload your code and all those things so let's stop doing it because uh, every time you will mess things up or you will you will get confused for example in this case you are confused i have cloned it's not working so stop doing that just create your own sep separate project that's what i'm trying to tell now right so create your own, own project just do exactly what i am trying to do in this project do exactly what i am trying to do because i am recording video as well as well as i am pushing code so just exact make an exact copy in your local if you want to put that into the git it's your cho choice but use your own separate github repository not this repository so don't do anything in this now okay uh <clears throat> all right so where i where what we were talking okay yeah so we are we have created a new project so this is my first project okay and as soon as you download this as soon as you sorry not download as soon as you create this you will start seeing something here at the bottom that it's trying to download something from a maven repository now maybe i'll explain how this maven system works before i go forward i don't know how much of you how many of you are aware of it so i'll just uh, go to a whiteboard maybe and then i'll try to explain it here so how this maven works is there is a centralized repository for maven okay let me draw a small block diagram here. this is a centralized repository repository okay this is a place a server where all the softwares in the world which are based on java are located including your selenium whatever you can think of which is which is written in java usually resides inside maven repository it's just if i am creating some code i want to make it available to a wider audience i am going to put that uh, software inside this repository now how you put that software in this repository is you know is decided by maven protocols right maven syntax so every every uh, you know you can say a software which is created in java and placed inside maven has to have three important things with it one is let me write it down here so maybe i'll draw something now if this is a software let's say this is a software then in this software there will be a specific signature for it the signature is you need to write group id you need to mention artifact id and you need to mention version now you will see this everywhere wherever you wish to do wish to, wherever you go and see any maven project you will see these things right so developer of this software has given this its software these three things it has given it it a group id it has given it a artifact id and it has given it a version combination of these three things identifies that software inside the repository so let's say if i want to access 
if I want to access this specific this specific software and I want to use it, how will I find it inside Maven repository? I'm going to give group ID, artifact ID, and its version. Okay. Now maybe let me show you. Maybe let me show you the repository itself. So I'll go here. I will write Maven repository. Maybe this. This is a Maven repository, and as I said, this holds all the possible Java, uh, you know, use user, you you know, uh, something like some library which you wish to use. Everything is present here. So whatever you have heard of so far, Selenium, uh, Cucumber, Rest Assured, you know, JUnit, TestNG, everything. These all are written in Java, and these all are open open source, free free to be used, and that is what it is. Every 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 piece of software will be written here. And as I said, each software has to have a unique identity, and that unique identity is given to it by its developer in the form of group ID, artifact ID, and version. So these three things, when you combine them, gives a unique identity of the software which you wish to use. So maybe if I go and check, you give a Selenium search for Selenium. Even if I go and click on Selenium Java, if I wish to use it, if you can notice the different versions available here for this. If I click on any specific one. I will get a XML format here, right? And you can clearly see in this XML format, you can see a group ID, you can see an artifact ID, you can see a version. Now this group ID, artifact ID and version, these are given to it by Selenium developers. The people who developed this Selenium jar file, so Selenium library, they have given this a group ID, artifact ID and version. And they say, you go and create your Maven project, and in that Maven project, there will be a POM file, POM.xml. It's called as project object model file. In that POM file, you place this. As soon as you place this lines there, all the code which I have, like Selenium, all the code which Selenium has will come down to your local. Okay. And that is the biggest advantage of using Maven that is for dependency management. So Maven is capable of doing many things. The first and foremost, which right now it will be useful for us, will be uh, Maven dependency management system, right? So you can also see that tag here, dependency. Now, what is a dependency? Now, if I go to basics of dependency, it's simple. I want to write a piece of software, a piece of code. Now, that piece of code is dependent on a different software, which I don't have with me. That software is something which is developed by someone else and it is an open source. That means they are, they say, if you want to use it, use it. Right. So in right now, in, for example, in my case, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to automate a web browser. Now for automation of web browser, I, I need to do many things. I need to know, um, how the HTML structure is. I want to know how to interact with the elements. There are many, many things that, you know, involved there. So instead of writing my own own code, I would say, I will make use of an existing library, which is Selenium. So Selenium offers me a functionality wherein I can, using that functionality, then using that library, I can actually automate a web browser. So instead of writing that code, uh, you know, to automate a browser, I will instead, I will just make use of the existing library, which is available to me in Maven repository. And how will I do that? I will, I will actually give me a minute. I will actually open my Eclipse and inside this Eclipse, I have a file called as pom.xml file. I'll go here. And if you notice when I created this project, I also gave group ID, artifact ID and version. So the, the concept is again simple. So I have created a Maven project. Every Maven project has to have group ID, artifact ID and version without which I cannot create a, uh, my Maven project, right? Now inside this, as I said, I want to automate a browser and I want to make use of existing library. Now let's say if I want to automate a browser and the existing library, which I have is Selenium, right? So I would need to write here as dependencies. I need to add some tags here as dependencies inside this tag. I need to mention the text, which I have here. So I will go here and I will just copy it and I will paste it here. Now, as soon as I do this and save, you can notice something is being built here building workspace 
and if i if you notice here right now i have i have only one entry here as a library called a gre system library i have nothing else here right once this download is completed i will see a another entry here called as maven dependencies right so what maven maven does is maven when as soon as you write this here maven checks whether this particular software is available in your local or not that is the first thing it will do if it is not available in available in a local it will go to the centralized repository which is this it will go here and it will start downloading it from there okay it will start downloading it from there and that is what it is currently doing because this particular software is not with me right now right it has started doing a download source in java docs and you can also see maven dependencies here okay as soon as you see this here it will start downloading it so if i can open it you can see these files to be available here now the point is where it is being downloaded what if, when i say it's not it first finds it in your local so where is that local that local is actually in there is a folder it's a default folder for maven where maven keeps your local repository so it is users so in this in your if you are using using windows it will be c uh then i think users inside user there will be your name and inside that there will be dot m2 folder maybe i can show you so so here i have a dot m2 folder here right this is where i have a repository inside this repository i have all the repositories which i would need here so i can actually place it so it says group id org dot selenium hq dot selenium then selenium java then four dot something so you can perceive it as org then inside that we have a folder called as selenium hq inside that we have a folder called as selenium inside that we have a folder called as selenium java and that is what we would do so you can just trace it i'll just uh, show you by example so we have let me keep it here so org where is my org here inside the repository this is my org inside this i have a selenium i should have a selenium hq where is selenium hq now where is selenium hq this is selenium hq inside selenium hq we have a selenium you can see so org dot selenium hq dot selenium inside selenium i have selenium hyphen java where is selenium hyphen java selenium hyphen java now inside this you can see multiple versions so i already had 3.141 3.141.59 but i didn't have 4. Dot alpha hyphen 5 right since i didn't have it that is the reason maven first went here checked it was not there that's why it went to repository system from there it downloaded and created a folder called as 4.0.0 hyphen alpha hyphen 5 inside that it has saved the all the relevant files all the jar files which i would need now inside these jar files there is java code which i can actually use in my framework in my project and i'm using those statements those commands i can actually automate a browser so here is a simple case of reusing the code someone has created some code they want us to use it they will place it in, into in maven they will assign an artifact id group id version to it i will create a maven project i will write those statements in my pom file and as soon as i do that those dependencies will now come to my system my local repository and it also you know got associated here so i can actually see those inside my maven dependencies and now actually i can start making uh, you know start writing the code which is uh, present here and i can make use of these libraries to automate a browser okay now this is not a complete definition of how maven works maven has more to it it's very basic which i have right now covered all i covered right now is to how to do a dependency management management thing in inside your project using maven but to start with the, this is uh, important and this is what i think uh, you know you can use you know as you know as a hello world project so when you start doing something this is the first thing which you would have to learn about maven right um, now any any questions so far on this any follow up questions on how it works etc etc or what it is or any doubt uh anyone can ask i mean it's not about new or old Hello, yeah Hello, yes yes pooja no pooja your voice is uh, not very very audible so uh, can you hear me yeah i can hear you but it's breaking in between anyway you can hear me. 
कैन यू हियर मी सर आई कैन हियर यू नाउ हेलो यस आई कैन हियर यू सर डिफेक्ट में हां ग्रुप आर्टिफैक्ट आईडी में मेन डिफरेंस है ग्रुप आईडी इफ आई एम आई योर वॉइस अगेन ब्रोक बट आई थिंक आई गॉट योर क्वेश्चन सो यू आर आस्किंग डिफरेंस बिटवीन ग्रुप आईडी एंड आर्टिफैक्ट आईडी right group id and artifact yes, id what you are asking right so see group id and artifact id and version a group id simply you can perceive it as a signature of your company so let's say you if you are working for tcs you're going to write when you go and create your project you're going to write com.tcs. maybe as your specific project so com.tcs. Uh, let's say you're working on a on a bank of america project so write bank of america right so this is actually a signature of your your company level details right written in the, in in up in reverse direction so that is an industry again industry in standard where the package structure which you create is you start with the reverse side so actually let's say your your site name is let's say bank of america dot tcs dot com right so basically your package structure is actually reversed there's a reason to it but let's not go into those details so basic understanding of group id is that let me revert this as well right so basic understanding for this is uh group id is that it represents your group group can be your company it can be your it can can also be your uh, your um, uh, you know project level information but usually it's a group it represents a wider group so mostly it's a company or a, a sub domain under it so you can say our dot selenium hq dot selenium right so this is a group id artifact id simply you can say it's your project name right so you remember we gave a group id com.vision it we gave artifact id is my first project that is what you see here my first project so artifact id usually represents your project specific project and uh, group id represents your your you can say org level or company level uh, details fair enough yes sir Okay. What else? Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. So, what is the basically what is the Maven? It means it is a framework or or no? Yeah, Maven. Uh, I mean, it's a tool. You can say it was it was created by Apache. Okay, uh, and there are many developers to it. They all found a problem statement, and they created mm -hmm. a created a tool to manage a project. Right. So. Okay. This is a tool. open source tool to manage a project it doesn't automate things it doesn't do many things but it just manages the project now maven is not only used for automation it's used for managing java projects so whatever java projects like if if api there are developers who create who use it for uh, uh, java for many things right for web development for development okay right so for all those things people use maven and for maven is actually used for complete project uh, life cycle right so in java project there are many things involved so it involves dependency which i just explained then it involves deployment and involves executions right many things it, it involves so all those things can be managed by maven so maven is just a tool basically to handle java project and wherever okay, it means yeah it means maven is used by both developers and testers yes everywhere everyone if you are if you are using java uh, i think at least 90% uh, 90% projects will be on maven and java okay. is a very very big to i this is a very ambitious claim i am making but uh, yeah this this should this should hold this is this is the truth uh, without maven using maven you cannot really handle a big project and nowadays there is another another framework called as gradle but mostly people are on maven and people are moving towards gradle but yeah maven is what is uh, is uh, is quite good and people actually use it a lot right okay. so this is being used by a tester developer doesn't matter this is as i said this is not about testing or uh, developing this is about managing java project okay a any any further questions okay so if you can also notice maybe the follow up of follow up answer on it so you can notice here source main java and source main resource yeah. source as java source yeah. resources right so 
the idea is that if you are writing a dev code development related code you will always put that inside source main java if you are writing something for the development code but it is not a dot java file it's not a java resource so all the file which is ending ending with dot java are java files file which is not ending with dot java is is not a java file right if it is not it is related to a dev but not a dot java file you are you will place it inside source main resources similarly here source test resource source test resource sorry source test java source test resources if it is a test code you're going to put that inside source test java if it is not a test resource it will go inside source test resources okay so maven gives you an opportunity to write or segregate your development code and test code right so all the development code will go inside main all the test code will go inside java, inside test folder now if you notice whatever projects we have done in the past or whatever wherever i think you were there in few of the classes or you must have developed something in the past we never as a as a tester we never go and write any code inside source main java doesn't mean we can't write it we can write it it will still work the same maybe with some caveats but usually you always go and write your test code inside source test java and you place your non java test files inside source test resources maybe it's just a rough example of the existing project so if you notice here batch 8 cucumber selenium source main java source main resources are left empty nothing is there all the test code everything i have placed inside source test java here and all the non java files so this is dot feature files this is dot config dot properties file this is not java files so i have placed that, that inside source test resources okay fair enough now guys this meeting is going to get over soon i'm going to send a new link and then we'll continue i'm ending the meeting now